Well, as you might imagine, not everybody is quite thrilled. Latino groups demanding that NBC pull the plug on Mr. Trump. And now more than a dozen groups are protesting outside of NBC's headquarters right here in New York City. That was last night. It continued today. Activists say that this is just the beginning of a long campaign to force Saturday Night Live and NBC to rescind the invite. Joining me now, Representative Javier Becerra, House Democrat Caucus Chairman and one of the leaders of this campaign. Representative uh, Becerra, thanks for joining the show. Thanks, Charles. What's your main opposition to uh, Donald Trump having some fun on Saturday night? On Saturday night, I, Charles, I think you'd agree that uh, there's nothing funny about racism, and uh, Donald Trump apparently doesn't know how to control some of his words, and it'd be, it's unfortunate because he is impacting the lives of a lot of folks by what he says. Well, how would, when you say racism, I mean, you know, it's it's interesting because. I would suspect you, you, you believe Donald Trump uh, throws things out there, throws words out there, but then you can throw a word out there like racism, which it's a, it's a very deep, deep, painful word. What's your proof or evidence that Donald Trump is a racist? Uh, I, I've never raped a woman. Uh, I am not here to, to just take advantage of the country. The words that he has used to describe people, and he, he used uh, specific words to describe immigrants and in in particular, Mexican immigrants. And uh, when you use that kind of a word and you can't justify it uh, by giving clear examples of what you meant uh, in terms of uh, a rapist, uh, I, I think that's clearly uh, beyond the pale. And, and, and for me, and it's racist. Then, okay, I get where you're coming from in the sense that the initial shock, a lot of people interpreted that way. But I think Donald Trump has gone to a certain degree, to a certain length to say, hey, uh, we're talking about uh, these countries, by the way, not just Mexico, but a lot of countries south of the border, sending their worst people, allowing their worst people to escape to this country. They're not good people for the most part. If they're letting them go, if they allow them to go through, many of them happen to be criminals. Many of them happen to be race, rapists. I don't think that he thinks that all Mexican men are rapists. Is that the position that you're taking? Uh, his words speak for themselves. And as the son of immigrants, I take offense when someone uses racist remarks like that. Is this just a way to be able to knock the GOP front runners? Is this just one of the? Is this just sort of an arrow in your quiver, uh, and, and a way to say, "Hey, we've got one. We've got something over Donald Trump's head forever, and we'll continue to use it and avoid all of the other real issues or realer issues to other people that include, by the way, the immense amount of crime committed by illegal immigrants." Uh, Charles, I don't think Donald Trump needs any help. Uh knocking them down some. And uh, I don't think if you've been watching some of these debates that uh, the Republican candidates for president uh, have uh, needed any help in trying to explain to the American people why so far it's been difficult to, to get a sense of who will become the Republican nominee. But in, in particular to Donald Trump, Trump, I think, uh, you know, he speaks his mind and he's entitled to do that. And uh, I think all of us want to defend the First Amendment as much as we can because it's important that people have an then opportunity how can you to defend the themselves. first amendment with all due respect how are you defending the first amendment but you're saying this is a guy who shouldn't go on a comedy show because he says something that ruffles your feathers because uh, the first amendment says that i can only say that he should not be invited it doesn't give me the power to stop him from being invited to the show 